I think we are back um, for the LVM developer room. So we have actually a team presentation today of the uh, like basically um, an analysis of energy um, consumption. So Kriakos and Nevilla are giving the presentation, and I just disappear. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for the introduction. So today we're going to see an approach for energy consumption analysis of the problems using the LNGM. So this is uh, part of the ENTRA project, which is stands for Whole System Energy Transparency. It's an ECFP7 funded project. And its overall goal is to, um, uh, to create software models and program methodologies supporting the strip for energetic limit. And what that means is to uh, cre uh, create energy aware software <coughs> development to promote this. So the architecture that we are using currently for our uh, analysis is the XMOS Edge Core architecture, which its main purpose is, is to um, to create hardware components in software, so like USB audio, for example. Uh, the the uh, reason that this architecture is quite uh, unique is because it's very predictable. So uh, it has 64 kilobytes of SRAM, has no patch uh, channel based and communication between threads and core. So the channel, uh, the communication instructions are, are actually in the ISA. Uh, it has up to eight hardware threads per core and four simple stage of pipeline and no branch prediction, so the schedule is pretty simple. So how we generally take measurements for energy consumption on various programs? This is actually an X-Core on uh, an X-Core core with uh, an X-Core core. This is a uh, standard in a, uh, in a 219 energy measurement board, and then this is connected, uh, it has an, a shunt resistor where you can uh, actually measure the draw current and get the, uh, figure out the energy values uh, from the core. So you connect that through the voltage supply of the core. And then you have um, a monitor board which collects all the energy values and sends them to the piece of the analysis. By using, uh, by measuring energy, we on uh, the boards we were able to extract an ISA energy model, which um, we were able to infer energy cost for each instruction in the ISA. We also take into consideration uh, the inter-instruction effect, so having uh, two instructions learning at the same time in the pipeline. We keep, this model is also multi-threaded, and it's also, we did also the measurements for different size of data. <coughs> so the first thing that we, what we are actually doing is to uh, do resource analysis and in infer energy cost functions on each function uh, in our program which are parameterized to the arguments of the function. So by using the, uh, the ice energy model that we have created and the resource analysis you can get uh, functions that tell you, uh, you know, your, the parameters of, of uh, sorry, the arguments of your function, how much is the energy consumption for this piece of code. So can I ask a quick question? So yes. if, if the function refers to global, is it also parameterized by those as well? Global. So, so if the function reads, say you have a loop and it's, the upper bound of the loop is what's in, uh, in a global, does it, is that is it parameterized by that as well? Uh, um, this is a matter of the resource, ana the resource analysis, I mean. It, it, it can, yeah, it can yeah. do that as well, yes. So as further you develop your static analysis, the better result you're going to get, and the more code you will be able to uh, analyze. Sorry. So, um, but as I said, we have the ice energy val uh, values, energy values at that level, and also we did the resource analysis at that level. But exit compiler is utilizing the LLVM optimizer and code reader. So we so various places that uh, we can actually do our resource analysis. The problem was uh, that if you go to an upper level to do the resource analysis, you have less accurate predictions because you are moving more further away from the hardware. 
but the problem doing the resource analysis on a lower level is that you are potentially losing a, a lot of information of the structure of, our, of your program. So we thought that a, co a good compromise to do the resource analysis is at the LVMIR level, right after the optimization passes. So then we, we needed to figure out a way of um, mapping the ice energy values from that level to the LVMIR level. And a simple solution that we came up was to utilize, create a mapper tool, which what it's doing is utilizing the mechanics for the debug information uh, in the LLVM compiler. So after, uh, the op when you get the optimized LLVM IR, we are having a pass that is just going through the code and assigning in the debug information a unique ID for each LLVM IR instruction. And then uh, when we, when the code is lowering to the ISA, you can tra track back uh, which ISA instruction are coming from which LLVM IR instruction. And then you got something like that, which is a more fine, if you change the debug information and make a unique ID for each LLVM IR structure, you get to some a more fine grain mapping. <coughs> and uh, then we aggregate for each LLVM IR instruction the energy values uh, from the corresponding ISA instruction, and we get uh, an energy value for the LLVM IR instruction. And then we emit that information per block in a JSON format that the resource analysis tool can uh, use. Uh, in the future, what we are planning to do, instead of having the mapping, we are planning, uh, we are running currently uh, this mapping tool on a large amount of programs, and uh, we are trying to do uh, statistical and regression analysis to get a standalone energy model for the LLVM IR code. And also we are potentially going to use this information uh, to create uh, optimization specific to energy in the LLVM uh, uh, compiler. And um, by having that mapper tool, then we are able to leverage the resource analysis on the LLVM IR level, which level is going to talk next about the resource analysis. Thank you, Kyriakos. So, uh, well, first of all, the uh, techniques that we're using to do resource analysis are static analysis techniques. And uh, static analysis is essentially a branch in computer science which deals with the systematic uh, examination of an abstraction of a program state space. And static analysis is um, one, one of the ap typical applications to find bugs in the mission critical software and verify uh, the software. But also uh, the techniques are used in uh, compilers such as LLVM, so analysis passes, for instance, uh, data flow analysis. And now, um, a particular branch in static analysis deals with uh, static uh, resource consumption analysis. And these techniques can be used to infer how much uh, resources are consumed by executing a program. And this, um, uh, this analysis can be performed statically, and it can tell you, for instance, how much energy or how much time or how much uh, storage requirements a piece of code will, uh, will have. So the idea is that you start with a static uh, C source file, for instance, and then we uh, built this static resource consumption analyzer uh, which would give you how much energy or time is required to execute a particular function and this would be parametric to an input argument or any other argument such as a global variable. So uh, let's start with a very simple example. Um, uh, consider this very simple factorial program which is defined recursively now, from that simple program, we can extract some cost relations. And uh, the way we, uh, we map these cost relations is as follows. So if we want to know, um, so these cost relations, they characterize the energy or the uh, resources consumed um, by executing the program on the left-hand side. So 
if you want to know how much uh, is the cost of factorial, which is parameterized by i, its input argument, then if i is less than or equal to zero, the cost is simply the cost of executing this predicate here plus the cost of evaluating this simple expression and returning it. On the other hand, in factorial, if i is greater than zero, then the cost is going to be the cost of executing this predicate plus the cost of executing this simple expression here, which is C. Now, the cost of executing this expression, uh, do you have a question? All right. Is simply the cost of uh, executing this multiplication by i plus the cost of executing factorial again, um, this time i minus 1. Now, what we do next is we uh, substitute these costs here by the actual energy required to execute those uh, segments of code, which we can get from the mapper, um, uh, because these map to low-level instructions. And then these cost relations are given to uh, cost relation solvers, which are uh, similar to recurrence relation solvers. And uh, they, these can obtain closed form solutions to these sorts of relations. Yes? When is the cost of the conditional in your, um, in your equations? So the conditional is here. Yes, but in the cost. Right. So the cost of the predicate A, yeah. so th this would be a. Uh, three or four instructions in practice yeah. is characterized by this constant yeah. here. Yeah, but uh, the jump So the jump, um, uh, yeah, so, so that would, would also include the branch instruction. Now in the case of, a, uh, of an X-score, uh, a branch instruction consumes as much as an add, for instance, a bit more actually. But on an ARM Cortex M0, for instance, it consumes twice as much as a typical instruction. Unfortunately, on a, uh, uh, on a superscalar architecture with branch prediction, it is more difficult to characterize the cost of the jump. Uh, so then we get uh, a result, which is a closed form. In this case, the uh, cost, the energy cost of executing this program is linear and it's parameterized by i. Now, uh, before starting our, uh, uh, our study on, on resource consumption analysis of LLVM IR, we, uh, we abstracted a core subset of LLVM IR such that it is uh, useful to perform resource analysis on. And uh, this is what we came up with, basically. Um, so LLVM IR, um, we characterize branch instructions, <coughs> predicated branch. Um, we also characterize um, opera simple operations such as this. Um, uh, these typically would be like uh, addition or multiplication, um, etc. Um, P nodes are important to, to model, um, calls. And then we abstract away all kinds of memory loading um, uh, operations, um, such as get element pointer and load. Um, this is because um, uh, when, whenever you're loading something from memory, you typically, um, uh, typically the compiler generates code which dynamically calculates a pointer. So it is uh, difficult to statically, um, uh, statically obtain a particular value for that. So we abstract it away as memload. <coughs> and, uh, all storage instructions, so memory storage instructions, are abstracted away in the same manner. And uh, we also have a return instruction. Now, the abstract semantics of this particular language are standard, except that uh, whenever we have a memory load <coughs> instruction, we simply invalidate x, which, so we say x can be of any value. And whenever we have a storage instruction, we say uh, any uh, part of memory may have been touched by that instruction. So as I said before, 
we uh, built cost relations which characterize the energy consumed by the underlying program. And uh, so a cost relation is as follows. So for a basic block, uh, for example, labeled A, uh, we, con we may construct a cost relation A, um, which is parameterized by X and Y, which are input arguments to uh, uh, the block. So any, any, for example, variables which are live at that point, including global variables, or, or arguments or registers. And uh, this part here is the static energy cost of executing the block, which is simply how much energy is consumed by simply executing the instructions in the basic block without following the branches or the quotes. And we get this information using the mapper. And uh, these other um, references to other cost relations characterize the cost of uh, executing any continuations from the basic block, such as uh, branching instructions or calls. Um, uh, and then any site condition that we have for a particular cost relation typically reflects a branching predicate in the original program. Now, how do we infer these cost relations from the existing programs? So at the core of our analysis is a uh, symbolic evaluation function um, which was designed for LLVMIR. And uh, so we call this function as eval. And this, uh, this function takes a basic block of code, BB, and a variable X. Now, if we symbolically execute this basic block um, with respect to X, we uh, basically are inferring what is the effect that that basic block has on a variable X. Now, that variable may appear in the basic block, or it might also be another variable which, which could be live at that point. And this uh, symbolic evaluation abstracts away the effect of the dynamic memory loads and stores. So uh, if, for example, we load something onto X, we basically say, well, X is, unknow is unknown. Hence, uh, using this uh, symbolic evaluation, you can produce simple uh, cost uh, relations, which can be handled by the existing solvers. So symbolic evaluation is used both to infer the branch predicates and sorry, both to infer the branch predicates to infer the site conditions of cost relations and is also used to summarize the effect of executing a block on a, uh, on a variable. For instance, a, a very compelling example might be a, uh, a loop and a, an inner block. And uh, what is the effect of the block on a particular induction variable? Does it increase the variable by one, by two, decrease, etc.? So, um, for instance, here's a, uh, a basic block here. And if we want to symbolically evaluate this branch predicate, um, we get this result by statically applying this uh, symbolic evaluation on this basic block. This basically says that i plus 1 equals argument 1. And it does so by looking at uh, traversing the structure of the LLVM block backwards. Now, to simplify the analysis, we only consider the variables and arguments that affect the control flow of the program. For example, take this uh, very simple program, which all it does is it, it accumulates up to n. And uh, this variable here is being added uh, inside this loop. But this variable does not have any effect on the control flow of the program. And therefore, uh, we don't need to parameterize our, uh, our analysis on this variable. We do, however, parameterize our analysis to n, because n makes an effect on how many times 
we iterate through this program. Um, now, this set of variables is computing using um, data flow analysis techniques. Now, for uh, more complex, um, uh, more complex program structures such as nested loops, uh, we need to perform some further transformations and analysis. For example, take this uh, bubble sort algorithm here, which has a nested loop and a uh, conditional statement in the inner loop. Now, the, uh, the loop structure after this program is compiled is mangled in such a way as to make it difficult for us to analyze what the program does. Uh, for instance, if we compile that program using Clang, we get this LLVMIR, and you might recognize a few um, instructions here. Now, this is the structure that we get for the bubble sort. This is the control flow graph. Um, so if we extract cost relations from this, we cannot actually, the, our solver cannot actually handle um, uh, these relations. So we have um, uh, engineered a series of transformations um, which modify the control flow graph on the left-hand side onto the right-hand side. And basically, uh, these, these turn a, an iterative uh, uh, program, which contains a lot of branching, into a more recursive structure on the right-hand side. Now, the program on the right-hand side would, I mean, the, uh, the resulting structure on the right-hand side would consume the same energy as the original program on the left-hand side. And this is the program that we perform our analysis on. For instance, here is one of the programs that we can actually analyze using this method. This is a base64 encoder. And uh, we can infer a, a closed form energy function which characterizes the energy consumed by this, uh, this program. For instance, it would give us this formula which is parametric by one of its arguments. And notice that this is only one of the arguments. All the other arguments do not have a bearing on how much energy is consumed by this. So we have uh, some initial results. Um, uh, so for instance, here we analyze a program which counts, um, which accumulates all the elements in a square matrix. And this is how much energy we, we can actually infer um, uh, statically. So uh, this is the result we get by performing the static analysis. And this is the result we get by actually measuring the energy on the actual hardware. Now, there is a discrepancy between these two, but uh, it may come from a number of, uh, of places, and that's uh, what we're working on right now. So this is the initial result. Um, but notice that the trend is followed in both cases, and it is a quadratic function. Um, for we have also uh, published some other work uh, using a previous um, incarnation of, of this work in a co uh, conference paper at Lobster. Um, so now what we're actually thinking about is to extend l languages such as C or XC with energy or timing specifications. And that's where, where we're also interested in uh, and working with the LLVM or Clang community. So, for instance, we've uh, devised, uh, we, we've actually submitted a proposal, uh, uh, not a proposal, uh, a deliverable to the EU Commission regarding a common assertion language, um, uh, which can be implemented on top of C or XC or other embedded uh, languages. And uh, for instance, uh, here's a pragma which says, check that the energy consumed by factorial is less than 100 um, units of energy. And uh, at, this, at this current point, we're simply 
just uh, in the front end, we're simply um, transforming this pragma and putting information in the uh, header of the LLVMIR file, and, uh, which is ignored because it's actually a comment. And, uh, and then our backend actually copies this into the assembly file. And then we can use our tools to extract this information and verify these assertions. And uh, we can get resulting assertions back. Now we're also um, thinking about other assertions that we can add to existing uh, C source code. For instance, um, uh, this would say um, trust that x at this particular point is always less than 10. And this helps our uh, static analysis. For example, this assertion says that uh, x will always be less than 10 in any part of the program, while this assertion would say that this while loop will, uh, will iterate a maximum of n times. Um, we also uh, are thinking about adding assertions about uh, probabilities uh, that a particular branch is taken. These also help our analysis. And we're also, um, uh, so another assertion says, ignore if uh, a particular condition holds. Um, this other assertion says that if we're analyzing the power, ignore this branch. <coughs> So this concludes our talk. Um, this is part of the Entra project, Energy Transparency. Um, feel free to ask us any questions. So yeah, I think we have time for one short question. Uh, is there uh, uh, any uh, plan for uh, uh, doing security analysis for, for example, cryptographic software? that shouldn't have uh, the order of operations visible from the energy consumption? Can we feed back into the compilation uh, to, to avoid this? Actually, there is uh, some work going on uh, on security regard with regards of energy in our group, but um, not anything particular with this project yet. But I can point you out later if you want some mm -hmm. to the work that they're doing there about that. Okay. Oh yeah, wonderful. Thanks a lot for the presentation. Thank you.